Hi everybody, this is Angel Arts, and welcome to Gay Let's Play Our Life, Beginnings, and Always. This is uh, another visual novel dating sim. Um, as many of you know, I am a sucker for these things. Um, it's a bit of a, of a guilty pleasure of mine, and I really enjoy these because they are relative, relatively short games. Um, I'm in the process right now of going through my Cyberpunk 2077 Let's Play, and that's a huge and long game. So I kind of like to take a break every now and then and play something a bit shorter. So before I dive into this, um, I wanted to like explain to you guys what exactly this game is if you've never heard about it. I didn't hear about it either. This was actually recommended to me by one of my viewers very recently, um, Kiki MC. So shout outs to Kiki MC. Thank you very much for bringing this game to my attention. I checked it out and I was like, there's some really unique like premises in this game and really unique game mechanics um, that I don't think I've ever experienced before in any other game. Um, and I played a number of these visual novels. So right off the bat, the thing that I thought was really interesting about this game is how much customization there is um, because you are apparently able to customize um, not only how your main character, your main protagonist looks, but also their personality and, um, and other aspects of that. Uh, so I'm really curious to see how that works, how, you know, picking your personality, how much freedom you have um, in order to create your character and how much of an effect that actually has in the game. That's a really, really cool premise. Um, the other uh, things that you can uh, customize is at least the look, maybe even more, I'm not sure, but at least the look of the character that uh, the main protagonist is pursuing or romancing. Maybe, I don't know, maybe um, you can pursue just a friendship, just a really close friendship with the other character. Uh, that's also a possibility too. Again, I I only did some very surface research on this game because I didn't want to spoil too much and I just wanted to get some of the basics. The last thing about this game that I thought really stood out for me is that as you go through this game, you progress through several stages of your life. So you start as a child, as a little child first, and then I think the next stage is adolescence. And then the next stage, I think, is like teenager stage. And then eventually you get to adulthood. Um, and your character kind of evolves and grows as they age. Um, and I guess your, your friendship and your relationship with the other character develops as well as you go through the different stages of your life. So I think all of that made me think, wow, like this, this sounds like such a unique experience and I am super pumped um, to play this game right now. So without further ado, I don't wanna spend too much time in the intro because uh, I know I tend to uh, talk a lot during that time. So let's go ahead and start a new file and let's see how well, how much we can customize our character. I am so excited. Tutorial time. Welcome to our life, beginnings and always. There are various ways you can customize and interact with the game. This tutorial is an overview of how certain features work. You can read the full tutorial from the main menu to learn about everything in detail. To start off, the game is divided into three time periods called steps. Step one is childhood, step two, adolescence, and step three is teenaged. Teenaged. Our, li our life is further divided into sets of vignettes that take place during specific periods of time. Those are called moments. Moments can be played in any order or skipped entirely. You move on to the next step whenever you want by selecting that summer is ending. Okay, that summer is ending. Uh, steps 1 to 3 include 5 moments each, and even more can be unlocked by purchasing DLCs. So far, I have purchased all the DLCs up to the recording of this video. Some are out now, and other DLCs will release later on. Okay. A lot happens over the years that go by, especially in regard to the character you play as. You determine nearly everything about the main character, name, appearance, personality, pronouns, 
interest, skills, their relationship with major characters, and so on. That's pretty... That is really involved. Like, super, super involved. You can decide to change the details as time goes on, with a few exceptions. Your last name, skin tone, and eye color can't be altered once set. Okay. Much of the MC's basic traits are determined on a character creation screen. As the MC grows up, more options become available on the screen. As mentioned, one of the decisions you'll get to make for your character is selecting a name. You can type in any name you like, or you can pick a preset name. Preset options are called voiced names because the name will be voiced aloud by the romantic lead. That is a really cool feature. Um, that was extra free DLC that I added to this game. You'll get to hear him say your name as you play through the story. Okay, so in this game, um, the romantic lead is always a, a him, always a male, I guess. Um, it would be really cool in the future if they expanded this to also be females, for there to be females as well. That was really neat too. Only the default name Jamie is included in the base game. Hundreds more can be added by getting a free voiced name expansion DLC. If you're not interested in that feature, you don't need to add the name collection to your game file. Well, I've added it in. So, each name in the DLC belongs to or was selected by someone who supported this project. That's really cool. Lastly, you can change the spelling of a name after selecting the voice option you want. For example, going from gray to gray. Oh! That's- I like that! This- there's a- there is a lot involved with this- with this visual novel. I am super impressed so far. You can change the spelling and have it still pronounced a specific way. On the character creation screen, there's a cute doll you can decorate to get an idea of what your MC looks like with the different traits put together. Not all the things you decide about the MC appear on the doll. The script referencing what you've decided for the MC is the main way those decisions influence the game. Our life has a first-person perspective, so your character doesn't appear next to the other character sprites. You only see the MC as the decorative doll on the character creation screens. Okay. There's also a second type of special MC-based screen, the interest slash comfort scene. Unless you get DLCs, the game has one love interest, Cove Holden. He grows up with the MC, and the interest comfort screen is crucial for determining how that plays out. Interest level sets how much you like him. There are four levels, Disinterest, Fond, Crush, and Love. Love is only available starting in step three, which is, I mean, that makes sense, that's the teenager stage, and if you are at Fond or Crush in step two. Comfort determines how you generally react, think, when it comes to him. There are three levels, Nervous, Relaxed, and Direct. Your level of interest and comfort will set the type of dynamic your character has with the love interest. What you did in the past will influence the present and feelings can change over time. You get to pick your interest, comfort, near the beginning of every step. Comfort can switch between the three levels as you please. Your interest level can only stay the same or increase. Your current level of interest will become the new lowest option on the screen in the future. For example, if you decide to be fond in step one, disinterest will be gone from your screen in steps two and three, which will make fond the bottom level option for your relationship. Interest level has an impact when it comes to physically interacting with Cove. While growing up, things are rather simple. If you get along with one another and have, close, have a close relationship, you can choose to touch him, and Cove will occasionally interact with the MC in lighthearted or comforting ways. But starting in step three, touching can become more romantic or suggestive if you're at crush or love. I like how you can define, you don't have to go you don't have to pursue this character romantically. It seems like you could still remain platonic, platonic friends with them, um, or just BFFs, or have a, more of a bromance, or whatever. Um, I love this. This is really, really cool. To make sure things go nicely with that, there will be an extra choice to determine initiative level, and a bonus mini tutorial that goes along with the choice to explain the feature in more detail. Basically, even if you decide you like Cove, the game won't force you to act on these feelings. I like that. I like that. This is like next level. Next level when it comes to visual novel dating sims. Like this is this, this gives you so much like flexibility in role playing and I love this. You can always choose not to get together with him, choose not to accept or give romantic gestures, etc. If you do decide to date Cove though, you can't break up with him later. Okay, well that's interest that's an interesting decision. 
Interest slash comfort gets the basics down, but it's the choices that appear throughout the normal game events that decide what actually happens between MC and the MC and Cove. And it isn't only and it isn't only the MC who is impacted by your decisions. Cove grows and changes over the years. How he's treated and what he experiences help shape who he becomes. In step two and three, Cove's personality, appearance, and interests will vary based on what happened in the previous step. It's something of a mystery exactly how your decisions end up changing him. You can try to guess as you go along. Or if you prefer, you can also just design your own ideal cove directly using the cove creator option that pops up at the beginning of steps 2 and 3. Making the choices you want is always more important than making a choice because you feel like you have to in order to get a certain result. I really the, the way that these this tutorial is written, it really makes you feel like you are you are in control and that you can you have a lot of freedom to play this game and to roll this game, role play this game in exactly the way you want it to. That's neat. When a choice does appear, usually you'll see that hovering the cur cursor over an option shows a certain color, yellow, blue, or green. The colors aren't related to specific points or effects. They're only there to give a bit of insight on the tone slash emotion of the choice, since text alone can potentially be read in more than one way. Blue tends to be casual, straightforward. Yellow more emotive, reactive, and green less certain, uncommitted. I, I, goodness, this game is already like worlds beyond even some of the, you know, triple A, like role playing games that we've that I played. Because a lot of problems that people have with typical RPGs is even if you get to select a specific, like dialogue choice. You're not always sure what the tone of that, of the words that you see on the screen are. Because just because you can see the text of the dialogue doesn't necessarily mean you know what the tone or intention of it is. But here they're actually like color coding the tone or emotion of the choice, which is like super bomb. I am super impressed. Though there are hundreds of options in our life, and not every choice menu falls in line with that pattern, Picking just one color every time doesn't give a gameplay benefit. Only stick to a certain type if that's what you happen to like, otherwise switch between them freely. Again, this again, like, forces you, not forces you, but it tells you, it explicitly tells you, look, there is no, like, major benefit for you to just spam a specific color, like, like it does in games such as Dragon Age 2. Dragon Age 2 kind of does that. Here they're like, just pick whatever you think feels right, and I I think that's amazing. Always pick yellow, never pick yellow, pursue ran romance right from the start, never romance a love interest, be disagreeable or amiable, none of them will lead to a bad ending. Boom! None of them will lead to a bad ending. Visual, okay, visual novel, other visual novel games really need this so far, if this game delivers what they're what they're saying if they deliver what they're saying this is like every every visual novel should model themselves after this this is like so next level you're welcome to enjoy the events and shape the story without reservation and then if you like you can play again to try something new there's only ever more good content to discover we hope you'll have a nice time with our life thank you for playing Round my character. Okay, so I'm gonna try to make my character look as like me as much as possible. So far, this is actually pretty darn close. So far. Um, square, peach, oval, uh, pointed. I'm kind of, I feel, I feel like I'm kind of pointed. I feel like I'm kind of pointed. Yeah. I'm more pointed than oval, so I'm gonna do that. Skin is tan, brown, dark brown, pale, peach, olive. Yeah, I'm tan. Yeah, I'm tan. Eye shape, round two. Rectangle, rectangle, oval, oval, sharp, sharp, pointed, pointed, lidded, lidded, sloped, sloped, round. I mean, the other ones make me look sleepy. Yeah, I, I'm gonna pick... I'm gonna pick round. Yeah, because the other ones, yeah, make me look sleepy. Eye color, black, 
brown, beige, yellow, gold. Ooh, gold eyes. Orange. That is my favorite color. But if, again, if I'm trying to stay true to me in real life, I love how much customization there is in this thing. I'm going to stick with brown because that's... Maybe beige. My eyes are a little lighter. I'll stick with brown for right now. Hair, choppy, curled, flowy, short, medium, smooth, choppy, two, long, locks, side, parted, triangle, parted two, wavy, blunt, side, two, spiked, wavy, short, eye cover, sideburns. <laughs> Strands, bowl cut, braids front, scr there's a lot of choices. Look at all of these choices. That looks r a lot like like me. Not necessarily when I was too, t oh, look at the two, oh my goodness, guys. Guys, look at all of this customization. I mean, this this game so far is so impressive already. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what I really wanted was... Strand, sideburns. I was really close. Uh, scrappy. Yeah, scrappy too. Hair is black. <laughs> I can give myself... Oh, the back of my head. The back... Oh! Oh, the back of my hair. Oh! That's neat. Yeah, I'm gonna. St I'm just gonna keep it simple, and do none. I'm just keeping it simple. Hair front color black. Hair back color. Oh, you can also change the. Nice. Nice. Oh, I can be a ginger if I really wanted to. But I'm gonna stick with me myself in real life. So um, let's. So I'm gonna be a he. And. So, let's take a look at the voice names we have. Oh, wow. This is really cool. There's a lot. There is a lot of names. Now, I'm wondering if they have... Gabriel. Gabriel is what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Mr. Gabriel, because Gabriel is... Uh... No, I'm looking for Gabriel, not Gabriel. But it's okay. I was, I was hoping they would give us Gabriel, but it's Gabriel. That won't work. Um, let's try... I doubt they're going to have Hark. Yeah, they, they don't have Hark. Let me look through the list. So... Anita, Chuck, Anna, Becky, Eleanor, Elegance, Cleo, Coco. They've got a lot of really great choices, though. Blue Cookie. I, his name is Cookie. Boyd, Emily, Brayden, Artsy. Um, no Angel. Angel would have been cool, too. Um, Cadence. Hmm, Cadence. December. Ezekiel, um, Amy Austin, Chance, <laughs> Chance is a cool name too, um, Gabrielle, um, Kai, it's interesting that J's come after, Oh, they go downwards. That's why. I was like, why is it... Yeah, yeah, the alphabet goes downwards. Okay, okay. That's a really weird way to list these names. Angela, but no angel. It's okay. All right, we'll keep going. Um, Jaden. Jaden's a cool name. That's a cool name. I really like the name Jaden. But let me just keep going. Um, Martina, Jerry... Mary Elizabeth Carrot. Interesting. Um, Jay. Lilith. Halima. Hannah. 
Hannah. Oh, cool. Hannah, there's a there's a there's a name for you there. Haru, Heather, Jaime, Hio, Holly, Jill, Luna, Ian, Joanna, Mallory. He sold. Morgana, Julian, Jacob, Lance, Laura, Jade. Um, Revan, Patrice. Simon. Tammy, Vaughn. Oh, Vaughn. Trisha. V. That's cool. I just played Cyberpunk 2077, so the fact that V is there is pretty cool. Tobias. I like Tobias as well. Wonder. Winnie. Um. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, um, so I'm gonna go with the, one of my favorite characters from any Telltale games. For those of you who play Telltale games, I really love Vaughn. Vaughn is one of my favorite games, so I'm just gonna name my character Vaughn for right now. So I'm calling Vaughn Angel, and we'll do that. And then, yeah, so let's go. Let's change, we'll, we'll go Vaughn. He looks like a Vaughn. My character looks like a Vaughn. Um, but let me make sure that it also doesn't have one more. Yeah, okay. It doesn't have another name, that's fine. That's fine, we're good. We're gonna keep Vaughn, and he's a he. Okay, change page. Birthmark. Oh, interesting. Scars, rosy cheeks, freckles. Glasses. Ooh. That's cool. Well, I definitely didn't have glasses yet when I was a little kid. So, change page. Birthmark. Arm. Oh. How am I gonna... S I don't know what the birthmark looks like, though. Where's the doll? Freckles. Clothing types. Pants. Shirts. Interesting. So I guess he wears pants and he wears shirts. Um, bracelet types, watches and hats. Sure. Watches and hats sounds good. Um, okay. I think that's good for now. Done. Summer, uh, your life. Summer in Sunset Bird was a special time of year. You're you're usually, you're usually, it should be you are usually sleepy town, or you're usually sleepy town, my bad, you're usually sleepy town began to bustle. I'm gonna go ahead and save real quick. Might as well save while I can. It was a popular tourist destination with people coming from all over to enjoy the beach, the weather, and the relaxation that came with both. The smell of the ocean, crisp and salty, hung in the air, bringing three whole months of school less vacation with it. During the summer, your moms didn't like you to wander too far outside of your neighborhood, so you knew the area pretty well. That included the people. Families came and went from Sunset Bird, but they mostly stayed and did what your mom called putting down roots. They built businesses, they got to know each other, and they definitely said hello to the nice young kids who waved when passing at their stores. Going for a walk around town mostly meant that the familiar, friendly residents waved or asked how your family was, or most often just said hello. You didn't really get why they always said, had to say hi. They saw you every day, but you nodded back at them anyway. You ended up saying hi to a lot of different people, since most of the tourists that came and went every summer were the same ones. You were too anxious to say hi back at most of the other residents that greeted you, but they all knew you well enough to expect that. I, 
I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little more extroverted. You ended up saying hi to a lot of different people, since most of the tours that came and went every summer were the same ones. You enjoyed learning all about what they were visit that they were visiting from, and hoped to visit those places one day too. But today there was a man sitting on the curb outside your house. He was sitting with his head in his hands, his whole body slumped over, and you wondered if he was even a real person, or a statue that had magically sprung up from the ground overnight. Whoever, or whatever he was, you had never seen him before. One thing about knowing everyone in Sunset Bird was that people who you didn't recognize really, really stood out. It was rare for tourists to venture into the residential district, as your moms called it. So for you, not knowing who a total stranger was set off a lot of red flags. Your moms had a talk with you. Oh, your moms had a talk with you and your big sister Lizzie about this kind of situation before. So do I have two moms? That's interesting that, that you have, you by default have two moms. You hadn't exactly been listening at the time. You think it'd be okay to talk to new people. They mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even if you don't know them. You remember that it's okay to run away if you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to worry about being polite then. Um, they mentioned that some people are, aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even if you don't know them. You hadn't exactly been listening at the time. You think it could be okay to talk to new people. Um, you don't have to worry about this. So this is the stuff that, that, this is interesting. So this is stuff that your parents or your moms told you. They mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to. I mean, this is, my parents were a little bit more overprotective. So they mentioned that some people aren't good to talk to, but other types of people can help you even, if you, even if you don't know them. You weren't sure about this man yet. Still, you felt a bit scared knowing that he was blocking the way to your front door. But you were pretty interested. You wanted to know more about what was going on. Whether it was night or thought, you didn't want to be bothered. Yeah, I'm going to say, but you were interested. You wanted to know more about what was going on. You slowed down, your eyes remaining fixed on the man. There was a split second where your eyes met and you knew he was aware he wasn't alone on the street anymore. Hey! You raised your eyebrows at the shout. Did he want something? Is that why he was here? The man stood up and started to make his way towards you. Not wanting to seem too approachable, you folded your arms and stared, still unsure about him, but willing to be friendly, you offered a stranger a smile. Your body was frozen in place as he approached. Yeah, I'm, I'm outgoing. I'm an extrovert. The man gives a grin on his own, of his own back. Do you live around here? What's your name? You looked up the man up and down, taking in his tan skin and relaxed appearance. At least his clothes were relaxed, the way he was acting wasn't. He had sharks on his shorts and a stinging and a stingray tattoo, and you wondered if he was obsessed with the ocean or something. While you made your assessment, he looked at you explicitly, waiting for uh, for an answer to his question. Yeah, I live here. I live right here. My name is Vaughn. You can to say nothing. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think just by default, I'm gonna be picking yellow unless it doesn't feel right. I live right here. My name is Vaughn. Not because I'm I'm like gaming anything or meta. It's just that that's what I gravitate more towards is the extroverted responses. I live right here. My name is Vaughn. Great, nice to meet you, Vaughn. He gave you a broad smile, relief settling on his face. Whoa. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a clean twenty dollar bill. It crinkled in his hand as he held it up to you. Okay, so this is getting suspicious. Even more confused than before, you looked back at him. Could you do me a favor? Nothing bad. Sorry, I should have... Let me start over. He cleared his throat and stood up straighter. From where you were standing, it just made him look creepier. I have a son. His name is Cove, who is about your age. Cove, that seemed like a strange name for an actual living person to you. No, I'm not going to say that. You thought that was pretty cool. You chewed on the inside of your cheek. This guy was definitely obsessed with water. You thought, that was pretty cool. You've never met anyone with that name. We moved in across the street, see? He gestured towards the house that had been empty for a year, his watch catching the late afternoon sunlight and reflecting off the walls. The gigantic for sale sign was finally gone. You must be Vaughn, Angel, right? I met your moms earlier and they told me you were eight, just like him. So, okay, so we're eight years old. He shook the $20 bill to bring it back to your attention, a hopeful smile tilting his lips at the corners. Can you try to be friends with the boy? Just give it a chance and you can keep this. He's a good kid. You'll like him. I'm being bribed. 
he basically is playing matchmaker, like like play date, play date matchmaker with his son, like by bribing us twenty dollars. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't know, because it's one of those things where if Cove finds out, I don't know if Cove's aware of this. If he finds out, would he be upset that the only reason I started like hanging out with him was because I was bribed? That would be really cool. It'd be really cool if I could bring this up, like maybe when he was older, maybe when we're like adolescents or teenagers, to be like, dude, I have to break something to, to you. So uh, the only reason why you and I are friends right now is because your dad totally bribed me 20 bucks. I think that'd be hilarious. But you've got to keep it a secret too, okay? It wouldn't be friendly to say his dad sent you. You eyed the man. You felt sorry for Cove. You kind of felt sorry for Cove. Did the other kids really get their parents to pay for friendships? Yeah. I'm gonna feel you eyed the man. I don't know, so... Yeah, I think you eyed the man. Did other kids really get their parents to pay for friendships? That was my instant reaction, so I'm gonna pick this. Had your moms done that for you and Lizzie? The thought made you frown. What do you say? Want to make a deal? What do you say? Want to make a deal? You took the bill. You didn't want the money. You ran away. Um. I mean, it's tempting. As a little eight-year-old kid, like, what eight-year-old kid wouldn't take the bill? Seriously. Um, you didn't want the money, you ran away, so, okay, I'd love to say that when I was eight years old, I wouldn't take the money, but if I was being 100% honest, I would take the money, and then we'll see how I deal with it later when we're older. I, I wish, I hope that I'll be able to, like, feel a little bit guilty about it later in life, maybe when I'm a little bit older, so, yeah. Again, trying really hard to roleplay my eight-year-old self as much as possible, I definitely took the bill. You carefully plucked the bill from his outstretched hand, grinning at the thoughts that you could, what you could do with that much cash. I mean, an eight-year-old with, an eight-year-old with $20, dude. All the sweets you could ever want. You could buy a ticket for the newest movie at the cinema. There was a cute stuffed animal you had seen in the store. It cost a few dollars to set up a library card. With this, you could pay for yourself instead of having your moms do it. You weren't even sure yet. So if I was, if it were me, I probably would want to pay, use that money towards a video game. So there's no video games here. So the next best thing, I love to read. I was a huge bookworm when I was a kid. Um, but I feel like a library card is something that my parents would have like set me up with anyway. My, my parents would have set me up the library card anyway. So... If I, if I was able to get money, I would probably spend it on a movie at the cinema. I like sweets, don't get me wrong, but I don't think I would use... Even at, at 8 years old, I don't see myself spending $20 on sweets. I would probably feel like it was better spent at a movie. You could buy a ticket for the newest movie at the cinema. You were already planning to ask your moms to take you. And and that was just a start. You thought the sky was the limit with what kind of a, with that kind of amount. The man smiled at you, his eyes crinkling at the sides as he did. Great, that's great. I'll bring him by tomorrow. I wanted him to meet and greet with the neighbors today, but well, I don't know where he's gotten off to. He laughed when he said that, but with the way his face looked, you thought he actually wanted to cry. If you see him, can you tell him to come on home? He got a. He's got a pink cast and glasses. You can't miss it. Okay. Can I keep this either way? Sure thing. I can try. Okay. Um. Sure thing. This definitely wasn't the normal way kids made friends. You knew that, but you were still going to help. The man smiled and reached out to pat you on the head, paused before doing so, then pulled his hand away instead. Your moms are already checking around for me. Such a, such a, such a thoughtful group you are. Now I better go look. Can't put everyone else to work while I keep sitting here. I thought he might come back, and that's not what's important. I have to go. Thanks again, Vaughn. So much. He jogged off down the street without another word. You decided to check the hills behind your house. Step one. First sight. Oh, first sight. All right. The chirping of crickets in the tall grass greeted you, quiet and familiar. From the top of the hill, you could see the ocean. As you walked, you listened to the crash of the waves on the shore and the seagulls squawking as they settled down for the night. You always loved the ocean. It was so much fun. I am 
absolutely terrified of the ocean. I never really learned how to swim, even at my age. People have tried. My husband have tried to teach me how to swim, and I can kind of, I can kind of do it. But I, if I will not venture into deep water, like if I cannot touch the bottom, standing up, I I will not go there. So because I don't I don't trust myself to be able to keep myself afloat. It's that bad. So. Um, because of my adversity to water, I'm definitely not going to pick the first one. I don't despise the beach. I, I like going to the beach. I like, you know, hanging on the sand. And I do enjoy, you know, being in the shallow water. The shallow water is fine. But I wouldn't say I loved the ocean necessarily. Uh, you love to hear stories about the sea, about the merfolk and sea serpents you imagined living far beneath the waves. That's a little bit more accurate. I don't know if I would necessarily say that's the best one. You didn't enjoy the beach all that much, especially the sand, which got absolutely everywhere. No, that's not. I like sand. I like say, making sand castles. So the best one would be here. You love to hear stories about the sea, about the merfolk and sea serpents you imagined living far beneath the waves. Sometimes you could almost convince yourself you had seen the flash of a shiny mermaid's tail in the distance. You took in a deep breath. You wanted to try to relax and couldn't. You weren't sure what, but something told you that you weren't alone. So you glanced around. Oh, there was a boy sitting at the top of one hill, almost completely hidden within the long grass and white flowers surrounding him. His head was buried in his knees, staring ahead by himself. For whatever reason, you probably, probably just that he wasn't paying attention, he hadn't noticed you yet. You watched him a minute longer, feeling a little bit like you found a deer in the wild. Though deer didn't have green hair, wavy eyebrows, huge glasses, pink casts, sad frowns. Um, I mean, I guess what would I notice first? I guess I would notice the green hair first. Because that is, like, a very distinguishing feature of Cove. This, but this bo new boy did. You watched, as, you watched as it fluttered softly around his face in the breeze. After a few more seconds, you took a step forward, then another. And then he glanced your way. His aquamarine eyes, oh, that's so pretty. His aquamarine eyes reflected the light of the moon. You stopped, raising a hand to acknowledge him and show you weren't scary. Hi. Hey, space did it. Are you lost? No, I'm just going to be direct. Hi. With a start, he jumped to his feet, his hands balling into fists at his sides. He didn't say anything, just stared at you in a strange way. He'd been crying. There were traces of tears on his cheeks and his knees soaking the hem of his shorts, and his eyes were still shining with a few more. You'd obviously caught him off guard. His pink cast seemed to glow in the twilight, though when he caught you staring at it, he hid his arm behind his back. Something the man earlier had said stuck out to you. Cove? Uh, eyes wide, he studied you. How do you know that? You touched the money in your in your pocket, feeling a crinkle beneath your fingertips. I met your dad. I'm all knowing. Lucky, I guess. No, I met your dad. So, is this your hill? He gestured with his uninjured arm to the patch of grass surrounding you, his face falling at the prospect. I can leave if it is. Uh, yep, you can't own a hill. You shook your head. Um, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna shake my head. While doing so, you also picked at a strand of lint on your leg. What a weird question to ask someone. Oh. He sat back down with a thump, resting his chin on his knees again. Curious about the strange new boy with the odd dad, you sat on the path of, on the patch of grass next to him. The pure white flowers that covered this hill rocked back and forth gently as the stars twinkled above. The way they dotted the sky made them seem like flowers too. 
The night wind was cool as it traveled over the ocean and up the hill, chasing away the heat from the afternoon sun. Why are you here? Nah, it doesn't sound very sensitive. Why'd your family move? A quiet hiccup escaped Cove as soon as you asked the question. Almost like they'd never stopped, his tears started up again with a vengeance. My parents. They don't want to live together with me anymore. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's... That's tough, man. The tears fell fast and heavy over his flushed cheeks, sticking in his dark lashes. My mom made my dad leave, and he took me with him, and now we have a house here, and I want to go home. I'm wondering... That's, that is a little bit unusual. Like, the mom made the other parent leave and take the child with them, or agreed to let the child go with them. Like, I would think... I mean, don't get me don't 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 get me wrong. I've never been in a in a divorce situation before, so well, what do I know? Um, but I don't know. I feel I'm wondering what the story is behind that. Like, like I many many of my friends, unfortunately, who have gone through a divorce with children, because it is very unfortunate with children. Um, the ones who like kick out the parent usually keep the child. Typically, keep the child and don't like. Normally, the one that's been kicked out typically doesn't automatically have the child with them. So I'm just curious what the story is there. Um, and, no, and now we have a house here and I want to go home. I'm, I'm very like appreciative that he's open about this, like very like allowing himself to give this private information to a complete stranger, basically. The outpost burst took you off guard. By the time he was done wailing, Cove's chest was heaving with exhaustion. He sniffled and removed his glasses, wiping at his eyes with the back of his hand before he put them back on again. I hate this place. I want my real life back. I I mean, I get it, man. I, I can't say that I've been there myself. I can't exactly tell you that um, I know what that's like, because I don't. I've never been that way. It, like, never... Um, been in that situation before, so I'm just gonna say, I guess I'm sorry if I can. I know what I don't know what I can say. I want my mom. I'm sorry. Your dad seems kind of nice. Ah, it's not the right thing to say. You'll like it here. You just have to get used to it. Stop crying. I'm just gonna say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He slipped his hands underneath his glasses and pressed his fingers against his eyelids. Ko wound himself up again f for another long, long crying fit. You felt bad for him, being forced to come here with no choice. One thing that I really love about this, uh, this um, visual novel, and this is probably going to sound really strange to some of you, is that I'm very excited at the sheer amount of dialogue choices you get in this game. There have been a few visual novels um, that I have also Let's Played on this channel that have so few, like, surprisingly few um, dialogue choices, especially in the near beginning, which is the part that you're trying to, like, draw people in. It's the part you're trying to get people to latch on to um, the game and also to like make you feel like you have some semblance of control over your character and your story. And so I'm really happy, like fortunately that doesn't happen most of the time, but there have been a handful of very disappointingly low frequencies of sheer dialogue choices in visual novels that I have played with. And so it's so nice and refreshing. Not, I mean, after reading the description of this game, I'm not surprised, but I just wanted to point that out that, you know, for anyone who's out there, if you are involved in this game or developed this game, mwah, so far, I mean, I'm not even like at the tip of the, the tippy tip of the tip of this iceberg. I'm very impressed so far. It's, it's great. The art style is, is beautiful too. Um, it's not quite, camp buddy level but it's still really good it's still clean i like it a lot and just you know the look of the ui i also want to say the look of look and feel of the ui it's minimalist but it's also like clean and i like the color schemes so you know like the gradients and everything 
really, really nice. Uh, so far, developers, if you're watching, so good. You couldn't imagine what it would be, what it would feel like to live with only one of your moms, but it must be pretty hard. Yeah, I guess, I guess uh, you do, you do have two moms. That's interesting. But from way off in the distance, you heard your parents. Vaughn. Cove. Okay. Kids, where did you go? Cove looked at you, tears still clinging to his cheeks. Don't tell them we're here. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go back to that house. I want to go home. You can handle it. You have to go. Don't worry so much. Sorry, I have to. It'll be okay. You can handle it. You have to go. Don't worry so much. Sorry, I have to. It will be okay. You were struck by a sudden need to reassure Cove. It... It's not gonna all... It's not gonna all be fun, but isn't he your family too? Yeah, I guess. I'm wondering if he, um... I'm wondering if he blames his dad in a way. You know, I think... I don't know. It, it could very well be that he doesn't blame his dad. I just... It, it seems very believable that he loves his parents. I'd like to believe he loves his parents equally. It's just when you are not with the other parent, if you are, you know, not living with the other parent, then of course you're going to be missing the other parent more in that moment. Then you can count on him when you really, really need him. You shot him a grin and pushed yourself to your feet. Slowly, Cove stood up with you, still looking a little reluctant. His dad's voice rang out again. Cove, can you hear me? He looked towards the south, sound of his dad's voice, silent, then turned away while rubbing his not bandaged arm. I still want to go. Um, you called out yourself. You called out yourself. You waited silently with him. You tried to convince him. You called out yourself. You would try to convince him. Sorry, I still don't want to go. Okay, so you called out yourself. You wait silently with him. You tried to convince him. Um. I'll wait silently with him. Yeah, I get it. You do? Before you could answer, you heard Ko's dad, even closer than before. There you are, bud. The trio of parents appeared over the curve of the hill. Instantly, all their eyes landed on you and they rushed over. Oh, wow, those are our two moms. Interesting. Uh, both of your moms were at your side in a split second, faces filled with worry. Vaughn, you're here after all. We had been at the park to check your for Cove and then heard what happened earlier when you met the new neighbor. I thought you might have gone further away. I'm not, I'm not sure which one is mom and which one's mommy. I'm going, I'm not sure. I don't know which one is which, but we'll find out maybe. Uh, no, we're just sitting in the grass. Why is everyone acting like this is such a big thing? I don't know if I would say that. We're okay, don't worry. Cove didn't want to go home just yet. No, we're just sitting in the grass. We're okay, don't worry. Thank God you're both fine. That's, okay, so that's mommy and that's mom. Were you two having fun out there? You looked over at Cove, who was wiggling against his dad's tight hug and pushing at his arms. You shrugged. Yes, I like him. Um, it's, mm, he's good. I think I'm going to marry him. Um, you looked at Cove. What was the question? You two having fun out here? Um, yes, I like him. You shrugged. Yes, I like him. You nodded, smiling slightly. Finally, letting go of his squirming, scowling son, Cove's dad turned to the three of you. Thanks very much for finding him. I really know this neighborhood. Good thing Vaughn knows this whole area so well. Absolutely, we should be getting home now. It's been a long day for us all. Say goodbye, Cove. Bye. The two of them walked off into the darkness, heading towards the neighborhood. You watched Cove's bright pink cast until it disappeared. Hmm, tell you what, we'll have a proper play day tomorrow, okay? Your new friend's dad wanted to bring him by to see you and Lizzie. How does that sound? Sure, can I show him my stuff? It sounds like words. You nodded, ducking your head down. Sure, can I show him my stuff? Of course. Of course. Then, okay. 
Both of your moms laugh, the sounds overlapping into a warm, familiar chorus. Mommy put her arm around her your shoulder and led you towards the path. Satisfied the, and more than a little ready to go to bed after your long, exciting day, you followed them home. Nervous. My feelings for Cove are nervous indifference. Okay. I'm not sure how that happened, but okay. So comfort, nervous indifference. Oh. Oh, I can shift things around. Oh. Direct crush. I don't think I have a direct. Okay. I don't think I have a direct crush. Direct fondness. Direct indifference. Direct fondness. I'm gonna start... I'm gonna start with direct fondness. I'm not gonna say it's like direct crush yet. It's direct... In, direct fondness. There we go. At, but like at the low end. The low end of direct fondness. Because I don't know much about this kid other than he just like... Thinking about this in real life, like I'm sympathetic towards his towards his situation, but I don't know enough about him outside of his his I I, I, I don't want to say sob story because that sounds so insensitive. Like other than his current life challenge at the moment, like I don't know what his interests are. I don't know like what he likes to do. I don't know what he likes to play with. I don't know what his favorite movies are, you know, things like that. So um, it's not indifference. It's more like I'm just curious because I don't even know if we even would get along. I don't know if I would even like him as a friend, but I'm at least like open minded because he seems nice enough. Um, he's just going through a very tough patch. And when you're going through a tough patch, you're not yourself either. Like, I think even if I wanted to get to know him, it would I would not be able to get to know the real him because he's kind of going through some stuff. So, my feelings... Interesting. Nervous, relaxed fondness. Direct fondness. Um, I'm going to again say relaxed fondness. So we're both... Comfort is relaxed. Interest is... Is... Yeah. Relaxed fondness and... Relaxed fun, yeah. Relaxed fondness and relaxed interest. Okay, so let's go right, ready. Begin step one at relaxed fondness. You won't be able to change it again until step two. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm playing this game for the first time, so this feels right to me. Relaxed, low end of relaxed fondness, low end of relaxed comfort. I don't know the kid enough to really make a. Dis to can make a dis to distinguish anything beyond that. So nothing's direct. It's just kind of cool, relaxed, cool, 